everybody. And um, so, yeah, as Matt pointed out, the, the title of my talk is Knowledge Content for Web Virtual Reconstruction. So this is in the context of a project uh, where we're trying to create uh, Virtual Historic Dublin from lots of uh, different data sources, and I'll talk about that. Just in terms of uh, knowledge content, the, the involvement with cost um, made us sort of question, you know, we were taking for granted what we would describe of adding intelligence to digital objects so that they can be used for various uh, scenarios like reconstruction, conservation, even energy modeling. So we sort of uh, used this opportunity when we had some interns over, one on an SDSM and then an intern from Carleton University who we work with, to have a look at how we add knowledge, information to digital objects to move them from being, say, static objects to more dynamic information, knowledge-based models. Um, so, you know, that's around uh, software platforms like JS and Historic BIM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is where, you know, you've, you've got the movement of, say, the point cloud, which is sort of dead information, to, uh, say, objects which become part of buildings, et cetera. So, um, you know, so th th this is the idea that you can use these objects for conservation, reconstruction, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, like, like all, you know, in this area, it's multidisciplinary <coughs> and it's an evolving system. So anybody from computer scientists, graphic artists, to archaeologists, architects, um, are working on the project. So just in terms of the workflow, and this is the sort of normal workflow that you'll, you'll, you'll get for, uh, say, data capture, and then the modeling of archaeology and architectural heritage. So it starts with, uh, say, data capture, laser scanning, photogrammetry, and there are lots of other digital systems as well, as well as the older systems. Um, dig digital processing and organization. So especially for the uh, automated data capture, there's a lot of work. It's collected very quickly, but there's a lot of work in making sense out of it. Um, so before it's uh, processed and turned into say what we would describe as heritage GIS, heritage BIM, or indeed game engines which are sort of open source and allow for better dissemination. Um, the, the, the data has to be organized, processed, et cetera. So I'll say a little bit about that. Um, so yeah, just in terms of the project itself, um, you know, this is the overall aim of it is to allow access. So we have uh, a 3D point cloud for the historic city which is captured uh, with aerial scans, and then we add our own terrestrial scans and other measurements from, <coughs> uh, say, from historic drawings to that data to create the model. And the model then would, would sort of, uh, you know, it would show the evolution of the city, et cetera, the historic city. So who uses it? So it can be for cultural tourism, or it can be for building professionals, or for education. Um, and you know, here's the type of experience that's interactive if it's uh, cultural tourism. Uh, if it's uh, building professions, what they want is access to data for conservation, et cetera. And uh, on the education side, it's a mix of both. So that's the sort of framework for it. Um, so as I say, this paper is written in the context of the SDSM uh, this year, which uh, we, we use from uh, our course program. So and just a sort of word on the people who are working. So two main interns working at one from the University of Federico and she's an architectural student, PhD student, and then Karim who comes from Carlton University, uh, where Carlton are carrying out this very large scan of the Parliament precinct, all of the Parliament buildings, it's quite sophisticated. Uh, you know, the rest then are um, we work closely with the Discovery Program and with National Monuments. So the Discovery Program do all the new technology recording for archaeology <laughs> heritage in Ireland. <coughs> and the project then was this time managed out of School of Engineering in Trinity. Um, so just in terms of the uh, research methods we used here, uh, so it was a combination. We just started with the usual literature research, uh, a few seminars, and then you know, we, we had the sort of answers to the questions. So in terms of literature, you know, we've got our own sort of ongoing obsession with historic building information modeling. So we, you know, we have a lot of 
the data there already, but what was new was this area of, say, defining knowledge in the context of uh, reconstruction, digital reconstruction, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, okay, so yeah, we started off with uh, research seminars with the people working in the area and a, a series of questions. You know, how's the knowledge created? How can we characterize it? What are the sources, et cetera, et cetera. But to sort of summarize on that, it led us back then to uh, our own case studies. So the work that we've been doing over the last probably 15 years um, sort of pointed to the direction, well, you know, where were we were asked to do, to build reconstructed digital models of historic buildings. You know, what knowledge did we put in and what knowledge was taken out? So um, it, it, you know, it clearly became apparent um, you know, that it depended on the scenario, it depended on the use, whatever use was being made of the data. Um, so again, it's just back to the workflow, and this is the workflow for the historic city. So you have here at the bottom the historic documents, so there's lots of maps and other text, pattern books, etc., which show how the buildings were put together. Uh, and as I said before, we have the 3D city point cloud, which was, um, was built between I think it was 2013 up to 2016, uh, aerial-based. And on top of that, then we put in the models or the terrestrial scans. Um, you know, and from that, we get models, and from that, we get documentation, which can be used for conservation analysis, et cetera. Um, okay, so, so to look at uh, you know, how you move from the, the digital data, which is captured by whatever system you want to use, laser scanning or photogrammetry, et cetera, um, just, so just a, a few case studies here on how that is recorded. So uh, you know, everybody here is familiar with uh, laser scanning and the data is captured very, very quickly. But as I said earlier, um, it's, it's very difficult to deal with these large point clouds, large da data sets. It captures a lot of data you don't want, et cetera. So how do you deal with that? Um, structured light, it's more specific. So this uh, is where we got into digital reconstruction and you know, I'll talk about this project later. Uh, these were damaged capitals on the Beaucourt's typical classical building. Um, so structured light, another form of scanning, but it's very high resolution. So the points are very close together um, and the mo model al almost looks solid. Uh, now photogrammetry, which I prefer myself, uh, is, you know, it, it is, is quite good, but you don't always get a result. You have problems then because you have to introduce measurements because the object, while it, it has the geometry, it may not have the uh, real world geometry, so it has to be scaled up. So you have to introduce other measurements into the software. So lots of software available, some better than others. So this again is the, uh, the capitals we were working on in the full courts. So you can see all the camera positions here. So same sort of principles, uh, you know, with uh, the laser scanner, with the terrestrial laser scanning, it's, it's time of flight of a laser beam. With uh, a structure promotion, it's the actual uh, light which is reflected back into the camera and the position. So you've got a triangulation so you can find a number of points. Um, and the, the geometry then is a little bit more complicated. It's actually, so it's actually created with software whereas the laser scanner actually collects the data in real time and gives you the 3D model, so much more accurate. Okay, so just give me a few minutes to show that. So just a quick video, whoops. This takes a few minutes. So this is a video of, the, of some of the data from the point cloud of the city. Um, no, it'll come up now. <laughs> so it, it's, it's not embedded in, in the software, so. I just have to wait till this turns red. this. Now, well, I'll come back to it again. Um, so you can see here's the 2008 data set, here's the 2015 data set. Uh, so that's the extent of the survey, the, uh, the aerial s survey, which was a combination of uh, photographs and a scanning from both planes and helicopters. And it very much concentrated on trying to get the facades of the buildings as opposed to getting the roofs. So just, uh, um, this is Dublin Castle. 
So that's the resolution of the aerial scan. And you'll see later where we put the terrestrial scans and the laser scans together. Uh, we increase the resolution, the detail of the facades. But it's quite good because um, you know, normally when you scan from aerial scans, you pick up just the roofs. But so they, the flight paths uh, were determined which would pick up as much detail of the facade as possible. I'll just try that video again. Okay, so it's just a section of the scan. And you can see then, um, by processing the data, you can increase the resolution of the facades and the detail that you get. And you know, then you can bring in more data, photog photogrammetric and uh, uh, terrestrial scans to improve. So you can see all the facades, roofs, very clear. So it's a 3D model. And from that, we can uh, you know, take cut sections build up whatever models we like. And in, in some cases, we just use the scan, and I'll show that later. Um, so in this case, by using voxels, increasing the size of the points, um, the, the detail became clearer. So by working with the raw scan data, there's a fair bit of, fair bit of work to do. Okay, so just some of the processing that we did on this data. Okay, so you can see you know, how rough the data is and how you can uh, improve it by uh, segmenting it, uh, using um, you know, return signals, et cetera, et cetera, and coloring. So in this case, we, we, haven't used, we haven't introduced any of the color from the aerial photographs as yet, although someone is working on uh, using those for creating uh, photogrammetric models which can be put together with this model. So you can see it's very rough when you deal with it first and you can work a way to improve it. Um, so this is the Parliament building uh, in Dublin and where we're creating, we've created the full information model of the Parliament but we're also looking at the evolution of the buildings around it. But So here we've put the terrestrial scan and the aerial scan together. So Again, re the resolution, the detail improves. Um, so this is the uh, Dublin Castle, which is the medieval side of the city. The, the parliament is more in the Georgian part of the city, the classical part. Um, so here again, it's the point cloud with fairly good detail. But I, I don't have the slide here, but we were able to mesh that. So we were able to turn it into a solid model. Because you'll see that you know, the other route to go down is actually to introduce solid objects into the point cloud, and you're, 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 you've got a completely different data set and a lot of work. Um, this is back to Leinster House again. So this is the point cloud, and you can see, you know, that the, the initial thing is that all of the scans are taken from different angles, different locations. So alignment of the scans uh, to bring them all together in one model. Now, this is becoming easier and easier as uh, the, you know, with some of the scanners now, it will actually um, register the scans for you. But basically, you either put uh, um, some sort of marker on the building, or you can use uh, edges on the building to locate match uh, se selection of points in the point cloud and orientate them until it's registered and you have the, um, you know, the proper geolocation of each scan. So each scan is taken from separate locations. But it's also kept uh, later for different types of organization because you might want to break it up into floors when you're building the model. Um, okay, so <coughs> yeah, this is the bringing the aerial scan and the, the terrestrial scan together. Um, so for, for a lot of this, now in some cases we've built our own plugins for some of the software, but here, uh, you know, because we're using the Canadians, uh, Canadian students to work on this, they more, more or less take, they use the, the best of the high-end software. So you're talking about a uh, recap, Autodesk recap, which very smooth, handles your point clouds. You can uh, segment it, you can take parts of it, you can take elevation sections. So you can actually use it as, as a tool itself to interpret the point cloud. Um, unfortunately, it's expensive, but if you're in college, you get it for free. And Revit then is the modeling tool. 
Um, so this is the parliament uh, which has been meshed uh, in Geomagic. So it's a uh, Canadian software and you know it's spot on. So we have lots of open source uh, software like MeshLab, great for small objects, but for very big objects, you know, again, you have to use this high-end expensive software um, and not everybody has available availability to this type of software, but uh, again, the colleges can get access. So, okay, so, you know, there we have the data capture and the processing, just based on a few case studies. And um, so this idea of uh, creating dynamic uh, knowledge models, um, building information models, et cetera, et cetera, uh, GIS models, heritage GIS. So there's, there's a sort of number of ways of doing it. Um, this is uh, Wells Cathedral, and it's built inside ARCHICAD. So ARCHICAD is a uh, building information package, which is fairly good for historic architecture. But you see here, this has been done graphically. So once you build this model, um, you can't really use these parts uh, for other similar models, not saying that you know, you should have this sort of cut and paste approach. But um, so if you build parametric objects, you can actually reuse them again and again because, you know, buildings have this repetitive nature um, where, you know, windows for the 1700s, 1800s are very similar and you can build them as objects. So just a sort of quick journey through our own sort of evolution in terms of how, how we model, etc. So you have a point cloud here on your left and the model on the right. So this is uh, one of the first Georgian streets, classical streets in Dublin. Um, here's the objects as we would build them and code. We coded them in this case so they'd be parametric so we could reuse them um, it, throughout the city. So you know, it's, it's all built around blocks, turned at angles. Um, so now putting these objects onto the scan, there's loads of different ways of doing it, but basically they're aligned with the scan. So you're moving, so this is a phot photogrammetric model and we're turning it into uh, a solid model. So each of those objects, at the start of it, the window knows it's a window and the column knows it's a Corinthian capital. And you know, so you're getting into this, uh, the semantics of the building parts and that will allow you later to do different types of analysis. Mesh models can be used directly. So this is where photogrammetry probably is at its best. So this is a uh, recap. Uh, it's the Campanile in Trinity. That was the chapel in Trinity just before that. So, uh, you know, here we can get a solid model and uh, as a mesh, we can bring it in uh, as part of, you know, the whole building. So, um, and I'll talk about this particular case study. So, this was damaged to the four courts in the Civil War. Um, so, here we, we looked at the damaged area, which is the dome and drum and the capitals over it. And we used the historic drawings and other documents to see how this was built because, because it's starting to fall apart again, we need to know how it was constructed. Uh, and we took cuts and scans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and from that, you know, different solutions were put forward for the building structure. And I'll go into that again, how, what sort of documentation we gave the architects, the engineers, but basically moving from low res scans. Um, so this is just one example of conservation analysis. So the capitals, are the area where most of the damage, um, so it was a fire as well as shell fire. So a lot of the uh, capitals at this stage now, they were repaired beginning to fall apart. So I think there's 26, 24 capitals and eight of them have been replaced. So this is just photogrammetry there, but the uh, main analysis was taken of the, um, uh, the structured light scans were, uh, it was partial digital fabrication to, to reconstruct some of the um, capitals. Okay, so just on to um, you know, how, if you're going to take, say, uh, digital data which you know, has information of geometry and texture, but other than that, there's very little else in there which will determine, say, building parts for structural analysis or for recording for other reasons for conservation and decay. Um, so we, we looked at a number of approaches. Now, if, if you sort of uh, were to construct each building automatically, or sorry, graphically, it would take forever. So we needed some method where we can uh, automate or semi-automate uh, the reconstruction of the buildings. So uh, the idea of shape grammars um, comes from the work 
of the city engine, which now is uh, part of Esri, where uh, it's, it's described as procedural modeling, where you can set up various procedures um, where buildings can be constructed by a set of rules. So those set of rules are based on architectural rules. So if you just take, say, uh, you know, classical architecture, um, and the Renaissance document holds a lot of these rules. Um, the computer then likes this sort of idea of rules. So you can see the shape grammar here in 2D, and that can be evolved into 3D by rotations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, and, and the shapes, shape grammar does not necessarily have to uh, be the classical parts of the building. Um, so you can see the sort of evolution where the block is formed, the opes are formed, uh, the joinery is put in, and then the, uh, the door cases in, this, in, in the case of the Georgian architecture is, you know, it's the classical orders. So, so, so we're building the objects based on these rules. Um, and so just to look at the rules again in more detail, so if you look at any of the, um, the early manuscripts, uh, Renaissance manuscripts, you'll see it, you know, the introduction is this grammar of shape. And the shape is then, is, is rotated or uh, extruded, et cetera, et cetera, um, by masons. But now the computer can do the same. So you can see the shapes here, and here's your sort of two of these vocabulary of shapes, simorecta, uh, this one here, I think, um, and sima reversa. So it's just a combination of these shapes, which are called up um, from a set of primitives uh, in, the, in, in particular software. So it can be called up in 2D and revolved, or it can be called up in 3D. Um, okay. So I'll just move on a bit. Okay, so this is just examples of documentation. I want to get to the very, so here's the digital fabrication. Um, okay, that's the structured light capital, and here's uh, fabricated. So only one of the uh, capitals was fabricated digitally, but it, it was roughed out, and then the uh, masons finished with it. Um, the, again, applying this sort of idea of shape grammars to uh, uh, archaeology. So this is a uh, um, typical Romanesque um, door case. So you can see here's our grammars here for uh, the parts in the door case. Um, okay, just quickly through this. This is the Canadian Parliament and the documentation from that. Um, so different, you know, the, the, all this documentation is automatically produced by the software. Now what's more interesting, is just what I want to finish up on, is the use of game engines. Um, you know, so one of the, uh, what, I can just drag this along. So we want to show the evolution of the site of Trinity College. So you know, game engine platforms, the interactions uh, are built by the developer. So you, you could do this sort of thing in, in GIS or historic BIM, but the problem is if someone at the other end doesn't have this expensive software and, or the training, they can't use your data. Whereas the uh, game engine platforms allow us to bring this data out. So you can see here where we're evolving the shapes around the parliament, and we later textured them um, from some of the aerial photography. Um, you know, we're mainly interested. So this is the evolution of uh, sort of um, morphology of the buildings around the parliament over time. Um, okay, and in case of, you know, that same 3D model can be used then for uh, augmented reality. Um, in terms of, uh, this is a project around climate change. Um, it's from the work of the discovery program. So this is Dunbeg, uh, ring, uh, a fort in Kerry, which is, you can see, hanging on the edge of the cliff there. Erosion is a big problem. So this was done with photogrammetry and drones. So again, the, the same idea is going to use, the, the data from this period on will be used to show um, any damage um, to, the, to the monument. Um, so I'll finish on this very quickly.
Okay, in terms of stories, uh, this is outside of Dublin, but it's a project we're working on and it's badly funded because of the whole Brexit thing, etc. so it's a sad story, but on that side, money side, sad story, but this is a very good story. So we're, we built a virtual replica of the observatory and what they did uh, back in the 1700s, late 1700s, was they had meridian markers uh, which the telescope would hit on both sides and then they would hit the star that they're measuring, so they, they were able to measure the angle from, um, uh, from, from the meridians, from the Earth's meridians. So we've combined this with a bit of software uh, which will allow you to type in coordinates and um, mark where the, 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 the particular stars you're, you're looking at. So uh, this is just uh, um, the actual nighttime arrangement of the uh, observatory. Uh, if I could move this on now. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we've built a replica of the telescope which I'll just show now. So, and I'll be finished in two minutes. Okay, so this is the telescope they used in the late uh, 1700s. This, this was built in, in Revit. I don't know if anybody here has used Revit. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how they did it. So that's all the moving parts are in the telescope, so we moved that. Again, it's all moved into the game engine, but every, uh, every action and every interaction with the objects has to be programmed. So, you know, there's no automation in this. So, just to finish up with uh, a design, and it's more of systems architecture, uh, and this applies to uh, Virtual Historic Dublin or any Virtual Historic Centre. So we're talking about data input, so that can be laser scan, but it's also historic data, related archives, etc., etc. And then you've got the enriching, uh, knowledge enriching, uh, processing, etc., etc. And all of this data must be held in, in, in different sources. Um, so you'll have, you know, game engine as, as a server. Uh, you'll have the database for the original point cloud because people will want to go back to it. So this is a, the modeling, then the user output. So, uh, you know, in the end, then it can be served up. If it's served up as a game engine, um, it can be used for augmented reality, virtual reality, or for analysis by um, archaeologists, architects, etc. So that's it. Thank you very much, Morris. Fantastic uh, model of the architecture of Dublin. Uh, we have time for one very quick question before we move on. Um, um, I'm going to ask you one then, if that's okay. Um, we've talked about this before last night over a, a drink and I've been just looking at, thinking about the potential of your, your modeling of the above surface architecture of Dublin. And the, uh, the, the deposit models of the below surface archeological strata and how wonderful it would be to, to as it were, join the two together. And, uh, do you see potential in that? Or, or yeah. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's for obvious reasons we're working above ground, we have the point cloud. As soon as the laser hits the ground surface, that's the end of the data you're collecting. So anything else, it's brought in either as um, historic data or it can be current data. So, you know, for example, we were using planning uh, facades digital drawings to get more detail. But so you c it would mean going through or dig digging through a lot of archeological data, digitizing it, and it can then be registered with the model. So everything is, is, is registered in that, you know, in a 3D virtual environment uh, according to the, its, sort of its geometry and its position. So yeah, it's quite possible, quite possible. Thank you.